With this technique, you can create a split tone between your subject and the background very easily, and I don't see anyone out there using it. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and since my last look development video on split tones, which garnered a lot of views, I've been looking for another way that I can create that same effect, but in an even more macro sense. And it finally came to me in one of the projects that I was doing. So I'm going to share that with you in this video. Let's go. So this technique plays on the fundamentals of how colors react with each other. So if you're creating a look for your look development, the first thing that you must do is to make it versatile so that you can apply it onto multiple clips. So to demonstrate this technique, what I have right now is very simple, which is a SLOG 3 clip and using a CST going from S Gamma 3 Cine to Rex 09 Gamma 2.4. So what we are seeing here is a Rex 09 clip. So if you're not sure why we are working upstream of the CST, you can watch this video where I discuss about that. And before I show you the technique itself, I think it's helpful for you to run through my process of how I arrive at this uh, solution. So what we usually do or what I used to teach for look development is to go into your look. Let's say for this one, I have a blue look here and all I'm pushing is in my gain, I'm pushing it towards the blue so that we get a blue effect. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that there's a blue tint. So what we used to do is to go into our curves, into the hue versus saturation curve, and drop a point on the red and yellow, and then push the orange up, because orange is where the skin tone sits. And right now, her skin tone is very dim. So in this case, you can see that if I push this up, it's doing very little to the surrounding and it's only targeting the orange. So this is a little bit destructive because it doesn't really work that well and it doesn't look good as well. And another technique that I see a lot of other colorists choose to use is to go into the curves. Let me reset this. In the curves, you can isolate your RGB channels. And then if you have a middle gray, you can drop a point here and then do the controls like this, like that, push your reds up, go to your blue, make a point, push your blue up, right? And this way you can create a split tone. And I think it looks quite good right now, but it's not exactly what I want. What I want is a very natural blue push into the shadows area and not exactly the black area. So if you do it like this, your blacks will be very bluish. It will have colors in it and it doesn't look clean. And we want our blacks to be more or less neutral to maintain that realism. So although it looks pretty good, but it doesn't get me to where I want to be. That's where this new technique comes in. So let's say I push blue in my look node. So I push blue using the gain, which is more or less like the atmosphere. So you can imagine gain controlling the sunset where it goes more to the yellow side or you can go towards the blue or the green side. And let me just quickly remove my saturation adjustment. So once I push the blue in my gain, you will see that her skin tone gets very pale. And that's because we are injecting blue into her skin tone, which is more or less orange. So you're injecting blue Imagine in the gain wheel here, you're injecting blue to orange, which is the opposite color. And this is going to make your skin tone neutral. So how can we maintain her skin tone while injecting this blue into the surrounding? So if you have been looking at my notes, you know the answer is saturation. If we add saturation in the previous note, we will pump up the saturation in the skin tone and when we add the blue filter look, it will pull the saturation back. So we get to counter the skin tone color when we add in the blue look. So if I turn on my saturation here, you see that her skin tone recovers very nicely. And the saturation that I'm using in this node is actually from the color slice subtractive saturation. You can also use the saturation slider and the color boost. But depending on which type of saturation that you are using, it will also affect how this uh, reaction works. So we will discuss a little bit on that later on. So just by bumping up the saturation in a previous node, we can inject the blue without 
having to sacrifice on her skin tone. And it goes the same for other colors as well, such as if you're going for a green look without the saturation and with. You can see how much more skin tone is being rescued just by doing this saturation in a previous note. If you're going for an opposite color from skin tone, which is orange, if you look at our color wheels here, orange is all the way this side. So opposite colors are green, teal, blue, maybe not magenta, so more or less green, teal, and blue. If you're going for those colors, bumping up the saturation will help rescue your skin tone by quite a bit. But what if you're going for a mood that is more or less in line with your skin tone, such as yellow, orange, and also red, then doing this saturation technique doesn't really help as much as you can see here, but it still retains a little bit of the skin tone. Maybe it looks even natural as well. But most of the time, you guys will encounter the issue when you are pushing a blue look, your skin tone gets washed off. So let's say if I want to bump her up even more in terms of the saturation in her skin, I can go to my color slice saturation. Let's push that up. Push that up to 1.45. And you see that her skin is coming out even more. So this is a very macro way of doing this split toned look development technique because I'm not using any qualifiers to qualify a skin tone or any layer notes to push out her skin tone on the top layer or I'm also not doing any power windows so I don't have to track for this at all. So with just two notes, we can go from this which is a very pale Rack 709 to this which is more of a split tone. So that's the basis of the whole technique but let me show you how I use this in my professional work. So I have another clip here and in this clip, I'm using my Pro Power Grade from my Visionary Power Grades. I have a Pro Power Grade and also an Advanced and also Beginner. If you're not familiar with my note trees, you can watch this video where I break down everything that I use in my Power Grades so that you can set it up yourself. And I use this for my professional work and also my YouTube channel so that you can follow along. So in my Pro Note Tree, I have my IDT and my Output Device Transform ODT set up already from S Gamma 3 Cine to DaVinci White Gamma. And then I have my intermediary node in this video. You can watch why I have this intermediary node and also my ODT from S Sony S Talk 3 to Rex 709. And my look node in this node tree is located over here where I compile all my look development techniques. So in the look node is where you will go into your gain and push towards the blue. And of course, you can see from a very warm color tone in the lighting, we can push the blue until it gets very pale. Now it's looking a little bit tealish, so let's push it up towards the blue. Somewhere over here. I'm going to make it very strong so that I can really test the extent of this technique. Somewhere over here we do. And now his skin tone is still okay, but you're starting to feel the ick of it already. It's not exactly looking very natural and the whole look itself is a little bit very unnatural. And this is where the saturation comes in. So where should I locate the saturation node in order for it to make sense? If we are referring back to the way that I did it just now, you can of course add a serial node before your look node, such as like this, and you can put your saturation here. So I'm going to go into my color slice and add the saturation back here. So let's do 1.2-ish somewhere here. So if I turn this saturation on and off, yes, it rescues the skin tones a little bit. And then it's going to be the matter of balancing between the skin tone or the greenish that you see and the blue. So if it's looking too green, I'm going to push it up towards the magenta so that I can remove some of that green. And for the saturation, let's bump it up a little bit more maybe to 1.25 and it's looking pretty okay. So if I turn these two notes on and off, you can see that we add a very drastic blue tone to the clip without doing a lot of work. And his skin tone is looking pretty okay. If I go into my vector scope and let me turn on the skin tone indicator line. So it's sitting on the skin tone line. And I would say that this is a success. We managed to create that blue in the shadows and rescue the skin tone. So here comes the question. Do we need to create a separate node for the saturation 
for the color slide saturation or the saturation slider or the color boost? Do we need to create it in a separate node or can we do it in the same look node? So let's test out the theory. If I turn off my color slide saturation and I directly apply it onto my look node, let's do 1.25, I don't get back to the exact result that I got just now. And it's very important to know why. So that's where this image comes in. This is the operations within each character node. So each node is called a character node and within it, there are processes to which tools comes first and which one goes after. So if you look closely at where we are doing our look, which is the lift, gamma and gain, it's sitting right around the middle. So if you refer back to the fundamentals that we did at the start of the video, we have to have the saturation first, then only the look. Because if we have the look first and then we add saturation on top of the look, it's not going to do anything. It's only going to boost up the look that you just created. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to boost the skin tones in our color balance footage. So if you want to create the look and boost your saturation in the same node, you have only one option, which is the color boost, because it's sitting before or upstream the lift gamma gain function. If you go four steps down, you will see the hue slash saturation, which is your primaries additive saturation. And in this graph, it doesn't really state where the color slice subtractive saturation sits, but if it was up to me to guess, I would guess it's around the secondaries area, which is the HSL curve or the color whopper area. But anyhow, it's going to be sitting downstream of the lift gamma gain function. So now let me go back to this example. For this look, let me remove the saturation here and turn on the one before. So if this is your look, you, what you can do is also to compound these two nodes. So select both nodes, right click and create compound node. So this will be your split tone. And you can turn this node on and off whenever you want, because if it's a compound node, it will contain both nodes inside it. And you can also use the key output gain to control the opacity of the node. So in my key palette, output gain, I can do 0 0.5 and it will give me half of the effect depending on how intense you want the effect to be. So another way that you can do this also, if you don't want to create a node upstream here, you can also add saturation in your primaries, or if you're using HSV saturation, you can add saturation here as well. It will react more or less the same. But if you're going to be doing it here, keep in mind that your color balancing or your color correction is going to look totally off if you remove the look. So make sure that this is the final look that you're going for before you start to ruin your own color correction. So I guess it's safer to suggest for you to do your look creation in the look node and create a node upstream from it like that. So that's how we can add a split tone in a very macro sense into our grades. So split tone is related to adding colors, but adding mood is a different topic. So let me know down in the comments if you want to watch a video about how you can adjust the mood in your grades. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.